on behalf of Ministry of Ayush, I'm going to invite our session moderator, Dr. Radhe Krishan, the senior media advisor from Ministry of Ayush on the podium so that he can introduce these speakers and he can invite these speakers to start the program, sir. Thank you so much. Sir. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining today's session. We are uh, thankful and privileged to have you here. Today we'll be talking about uh, nutrition, mainly. Uh, see, we, it's very difficult to reach this venue early in the morning and beating Delhi traffic. It, it requires a lot of energy. And uh, uh, that gives us all the more reasons to discuss nutrition today. Because for that, to beat that uh, hustle, we, we need more nutrition and we have to be more conscious about, uh, you know, making our food choices. So that is the, I think, that is the uh, most relevant thing that we can discuss today. Uh, today's topic, as you all can see, revolutionizing nutrition, Ayush Food Innovations for a Sustainable World. And uh, Ayush Food Innovations, grounded in centuries-old traditions, are gaining global attention for their potential to promote health and well-being while maintaining environmental sustainability. Uh, also, because as we face global challenges related to food security, malnutrition, there are many uh, other issues that are, they are, that are cropping up uh, gradually. And there is a need to turn to holistic solutions. We all agree to that. Sustainability, again, is a challenge for us, not only limited to food industry, but other uh, business areas also. Ayush systems offer time-tested natural approaches that can revolutionize modern nutrition. And that is why we feel lucky to have experts from their fields who can talk about it, who have great exposure to these challenges. So the discussion will address a variety of aspects from awareness, adaptation, innovation to quality assurance, and global reach of Ayush nutrition products. And I said we are privileged to have with us our distinguished speakers today. We have with us Professor Tanuja Manoj Nesri from All India Institute of Ayurveda. When we talk about Ayurveda, this is the leading institution of the country. Uh, we thank you, ma'am, for sparing your valuable time. She'll be discussing the awareness and adaptation of Ayush food. We have Mr. Viral Tiwari, co-founder of Nuska Kitchen, who will talk about accelerating growth in Ayush startups. An amazing, brilliant idea. And we were just discussing, started by his mother. So we would love to hear about it, sir. We have Mr. Ashish Dixit from Dabur speaking on expanding Irish nutrition's global reach. Dabur, which again, we were discussing household name in India. So we'll have you know, great inputs from his side to understand the theme better. We have Dr. Manish Pandey from QCI focusing on ensuring quality and compliance. QCI, I think, the leading regulatory body in India. We have Dr. Sonali Mohan from Aswetajan discussing holistic health. I hope I pronounced it rightly, ma'am. Uh, discussing holistic health and addressing stigma around Ayush products. It is again, uh, it is again a very, very critical uh, aspect. So we would love to hear, ma'am, how we, how she is uh, handling it and what are her views on it. Now let us engage in discussion, uh, recognizing the role of Ayush food innovations in shaping a healthier, more sustainable future. With that, let us begin with our first speaker. I would request you, ma'am, could you please come and take your seat and I think, do we have a microphone also? All right. So I think I, I would request all our speakers, distinguished speakers to join us on the stage so that we can start the discussion. <laughs> Mr. Viral Tiwari, Mr. Aishish Dikshit from Dabar. Dr. Anupam Srivastava, part of Ayush only, <laughs> Dr. Manish Pandey and Dr. Sonali Mohan. Thank you, dear guests. So I would request now our uh, first speaker, Professor Tanujan Esriji, to begin with you. Dear. 
नमस्कार वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन एंड आई एम आई फील आई एम द ओपनिंग बैट्समैन इन दिस पैनल डिस्कशन एंड टू डेज डिस्कशन एंड थैंक यू डॉक्टर राधे कृष्ण जी योर नेम इट सेल्फ मे बी एवरी वन वील लाइक टू टेक इट मोर एंड मोर बिकॉज इट इज राधे एंड किशन टुगेदर एंड ऑल दी एस टीम पैनलिस्ट एंड माई कलीग्स फ्रॉम ऑल इंडिया इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ आयुर्वेद and all distinguished audience it is my proud privilege uh, to be with you uh, on discussing about awareness and adoption of ayush food when we say that the ayush food uh, anything which is healthy and the herbal and the tasty we consider it as the ayush food but maybe few years back two years back there is a separate category under fssa and considering as a ayurved ahar and what did what does it signify how different it is and whether really everyone is aware but i just would like to know to take uh, everyone's uh, take on this uh, how many of us of the audience is aware about ayurveda food ayush food category of fss can you please raise the hand yes and from the panelist <laughs> yes thank you so very much <laughs> so but there are few and how many of them they are using it in the uh, as a entrepreneurship have anyone applied uh, and is using anyone any hands y yes so uh, thank you so uh, congratulation so uh, it is many things are yet to be done and considering the huge opportunity when we were we had rolled on this through fssa we are thankful to fssa Uh, uh and the organizers for giving this opportunity and a platform where we can create the awareness and have interaction with all the stakeholders so ayurveda food itself we consider this as when it was rolled on and all of us my colleagues anupam shrivastava and every all esteem member and and secretary ayush and everyone we thought that this is like a sky is the limit and ocean is the opportunity but i think we really have to start with the drop by drop to create an ocean so this is how uh, the story begins and uh, the ayurveda food and what is ayurveda if we, if we understand so we say that it is a knowledge system of healthy and happy life holistic well being so it is the knowledge for not only health but it is happiness also and we say that uh, the journey starts from illness to wellness to happiness and as all of us know that we say that anyone we want to really kisi ko khush karna hai ghar mein aake if someone we really want to make them happy whosoever guest comes so we what we do we serve them with a the good food on the table so this is how if ayurveda also has the food is we consider it as a ayurved as a food is a mahabhashyam and that the entire sukha dukha priti everything depends on the food and it is a pranayatana sustenance of the life depends on the healthy food and there is a wrong notion that the ayurveda food is completely like bland food jaise na dadi ma nani ma jab bukhar hota tha to completely saltless tasteless food so it it is not so the this is the first misnotion that ayurvedic foods are the healthy but we want to make them tasty as well so but the taste makes the happiness and the health also makes the happiness so we are there to serve you with the tasty yet healthy food and that is what is ayurveda food and when we say that the customized holistic approach when we say that the as per who ayurveda also says that the health is then outcome of the harmony of the mind body soul it is harmony within in outside self inner self and harmony with the outside that's why we have the seasonal regimen seasonal food we have the local food biodiversity as india enjoys the biodiversity two mega biodiversity hotspot of the world we also have the cultural biodiversity and we have the food diversity as well and if we consider dadi ma nani ma's nuska and the traditional food across india that nothing but this traditional foods are the ayurveda traditional healthy food and if we consider those bringing back them into fmcg market and through the startup and if we bring them everyone through like we have the zomatos and swiggy and many others if we really 
if someone wants is hungry and wants them for their lunch break something which is healthy and tasty i think people will adopt that but now there is a lot huge opportunity but people are waiting um, to register to fssi under ayurveda ahar so for bringing holistic health ayurveda says that why food is very important because three pillars of the life um, the health is a diet lifestyle and nidra ahara nidra and brahmacharya brahma is a aham brahmasri so my own lifestyle from morning to evening we consider dinacharya rutucharya seasonal but what is important again is a food and food is not only what we eat but more important is how we eat when we eat the, that also is kisko hum ahara vidhi and ahara vishesh ayatan kehte so these all rules we consider as a eat food smartly because there are many <coughs> representatives from the ministry technologist and the startup so when we so our insert should be when we eat for example something is yogurt rice curd rice so we consider not to eat curd in the evening so we that timings when to eat how to how much to eat the quantity is also very important and how we eat the recipes because we have the incompatible combinations dudh ke sath khatta nahi hota hai so the shake is not ayurveda food and we don't recommend it at all food milk is recommended fruits are recommended combining both is completely not recommended that is incompatible so these are all things which are very important when to eat someone asks we say that suraj ke sath chalo that means morning to evening suryodaya and suryastha sunrise to sunset you should have your breakfast lunch and dinner so whatever smart food you have the junk food whatever snacks also yeah we don't recommend snacking after the dinner so, so these are some of the things do's and don'ts that also carries a lot of weightage when we recommend the ayurveda and ayur ayush ahar so lot of awareness capacity building uh, education uh, comes along with this ayush and ayurveda ahar this a and a and a that is the logo created by fss and we are really thankful because if you see the five petals and the five petals we had thought lot of about i think the years together to develop this logo and this represents five elements panchabhautik because the harmony is a five elements and whatever the food represents all five elements and that balances five elements in the human being in the, in the form of dosha that's why this ayurved ahar itself is a dosha balancing ahar that's what it represents and that is how the logo it is and a is indian alphabetical and a and a is a ayurveda ahar so it is integration and fusion of the classical yet contemporary and tradition supported with the technology so ayurveda ahar supported with the food technology is what this logo wants to depict and when we say that herbal tea functional food and the traditional recipes there is a big question whether this can, can be considered as a ayurved ahar there are many many questions from the stakeholders can we register this herbal tea um, as a ayurved ahar uh, because there is a nutra regulation nutraceutical regulation where you can consider this proprietary and nutra nutraceutical um, but then what is the difference between nutraceutical and an ayurved ahar that itself is a big question and i definitely will be there and the panelist also will give the answers but whatever the food formats the recipes which are mentioned in authoritative classical text are considered as a ayush ahar and the one which is a proprietary the dosage form food formats have been changed the ingredients are the changed and the claims have been changed then that comes as a the b that is a proprietary i think anupam will definitely share more light on this how different it is and how we do so based on on our intent the claim that can be difference between ayush ahar and the nutra regulation and the functional food and the medicinal foods so the emphasis is on traditional ingredients 
nutritional value must be documented and focus on sustainability and the local sourcing is also very important and coming to the market if we really someone wants to enter into ayurved ahar ayush ahar so if we have two option two three options from our dadi maas because our genome is nurtured from our traditional food what are grandma's recipes if we really someone brings those on our table i think the first choice will be to that because if that becomes again tasty as well then the tasty and healthy would be the first choice and that is what is the option for opting for the ayur ahar and the marketing and the importance needs to be once the stakeholders are con- convinced i am sure the rest of the things that the stakeholders only will take care so if we see that the market is cagr it is increasing at 8.8% and the for- during this forecast period so i think the opportunity use and the one who takes the early i think he will be the winner but if you do you really understand this how many of us have understood this name itself because ayush kadha kadhan was name was also not heard before covid time but now everyone even in the chick school kid and the child also knows that what is ayush kadha and now we consider it as a herbal tea but the ayush kadha itself is a best immunomodulator has entire world has witnessed during covid time so these are some of the dosage food formats the recipes the name itself is a paya so remember the name itself is a so if we have the same terms like the chinese and the others they don't change their terminology so if we retain this terminology that sanctity will be written and that itself is a the gimmick of the market if we say that mine is a paya or yusha and the healthy yusha the name itself if you keep yush and don't see it don't tell it as a gruel you can market it as a this is a healthy gruel but the name keep it as a yavago keep it is a anna takra kalpana so i think darpana that itself is a tradition having its sanctity and that only conveys the message of their health benefits that is if someone asks what is pupalika so i will not say that it is like a rab, rabdi ke sath jo malpua hota hai so i will not say it's a malpua but i can say it's a pupalika so this itself is a innovation and the, that is the need we can take our tradition to the entire world this is the healthy carbs when we say that we need nutrients and the healthy carbs so this is the saktu and the, um, in this summer uh, this, this is the summer uh, food and we know that the chane ka saktu bhi summer mein bahut acha hai and in the winter also there is a winter uh, recipes and in the summer recipes this is done by our uh, these scholars and the doctors and the specialists at all india institute and many other institutes the garima and the others also they are witnessing and they have shared so we have un- uh, assess their nutritional value their health benefits and these are scientifically validated experiential recipes and if we tested scientifically validated because we have the mou with the niptum also and now today itself we are signing again extension so if these traditional recipes supported with the technology i am sure this will have the huge market outside and we can make it label it uh, present it um, if we have that ready made like amul has takra the chaach amul shop and they say that their market is more than 5 lakh and many com- millions of customers they have the this Uh, masala chaach and other so if if these are we have the healthy panaka as a drink uh, and a grishma drink in the summer drink and if we are make it as a ready to drink i think this will be the best option for the uh, sugar and aerated drinks this can be the best option in the market and this also has the huge health benefits this is what is the ayurved ahar this mantha kalpana this is prepared from dates and the pomegranate and avla and the best healthy and tasty this is considered those who take 
those who enjoy the uh, the uh, parties and have the liquor and anything so to ha we considered for the liver cirrhosis hepatitis and to combat with all the alcoholism this is the best panaka and for many others so this is how we really have very important and uh, tasty good looking and healthy kalpanas and healthy food products i am just sharing some of the uh, recipes what we have done because it is not only the knowledge the skill and the attitude so we have the applications we have ready made recipes and such thousands of recipes are mentioned in the classical text and it is very easy to register because you do not have to have that food development pathway it is the classical reference you have to make it ensure the nutritional value quality and you will get the license this is how uh, this entire sector is very very easy to operate and to market as well uh, what is the limitation because when we say that all the everyone is in this audit audience or auditorium are not aware so this is a lack of awareness in this stakeholder is the one limitation then the limited food formats now the now it is not user friendly that's what everyone says so we this fmcg markets and the technologies and the culinary sciences if we really make aware them and with the technology we make ready to eat i think this is how uh, this can be Mm, understood what is first is understanding the terminology each other but i would urge to retain the same terminology so that we will be to become the global leaders no one can compete us so that is very important to have the same our tradition our sanctity so this is mar fmcg market which can be and we really say that we in the fmcg the herbs infused snacks and the drinks so it is the drinks and the snacks only herbs are 2% not more than that so this is not the herbal and the tasty but if we really have the tasty and the healthy ayurved ahar i think this is what is the best option india enjoys that ayurved is our own tradition it is imbibed in our tradition we have we are the owners it is a soft par and it is greatest gift and there is a this there is a potential to boost the economy through this ayurved ahar sector so for policy makers for home makers for apos for food processing industries for delivery platforms and culinary service providers i think separate awareness sessions needs to be done and we are ready to do that so maybe we we can have this separate awareness hands on training manuals and that we are ready now this is uh, this is what is our next step and uh, through all these stakeholders sitting on the dais and off dais we are ready to do this and what are the health benefits this balances stress stress rel relieving is he we have the gummies but maybe we can have the tasty healthy options immune modulator for this different um, disease health risk benefits Uh, reducing health risk benefits managing inflammation and many others and um, i leave something for the other panelists also but some of the jwar props ayush cookies uh, infusion and many other you can see the healthy tasty good looking recipes which our team at all india has prepared to serve all yourself and we have the chai ojas bar the name itself you see not nutritional bar or oh, just is a like mental physical and spiritual well being that puts so name itself is a prakruti constitution specific teas khichdi chinsa that is a tamarind candy ready to drink panchanimbadi sattu so these are various recipes we have already done prepared we are working closely with the niptam to evaluate them to validate them and with the nutritional benefits and with the startups we are now ready to serve the society with all our mous partners esteem partners we are trying to complete this supply chain management of this ayush ahar that is the need of an arm and through this are more than 70 mous i am sure will be able to do this thank you very much for this 
thank you ma'am uh, i think that's what we love about professors they uh, they just have a look at the audience and then they know they, they get the pulse and uh, sonne pe suhaga ma'am is a vaidya also she she got the pulse and she started her discussion about uh, you know uh, asking the audience whether you only know about the homework or you have done some homework so i think next time uh, we'll have more hands raised in this room ma'am uh, next uh, i still remember ma'am uh, we were in jnu and there in narmada hostel we had sick food especially for those students who are feeling sick so they had this boiled food and because of that that pot students you know jo bimar bhi hota tha wo bolta tha nahi bimar nahi hu main so it was so that that's where i think uh, ayush food innovations are pitching in so it is not she uh, ma'am has highlighted that ayush ahar is no more that sick food it is it is it is uh, it is interesting there are new uh, varieties coming up we have interesting startups who are coming up with great ideas interesting ideas and then uh, ma'am also talked about the logo of ayush ahar and it reflects the dedication commitment and also the vision that has gone into this idea and uh, so the kind of variety that ma'am has presented lot of uh, options innovations are happening in this sector and and all varieties i think in all areas of food items it is happening uh, and then she also talked about the challenges that we are facing uh, mainly about the awareness and i think onus i i completely agree with you ma'am onus is on the industry because it is the industry that takes lead whenever we face any uh, whenever whenever we have any innov innovative idea so it is the industry so i think it is the time that industry doesn't shy away to, to this these ideas and they take them up and it will definitely uh, you know um, pay a dividend to them in, in a very short time so now uh, we are ready for our next speaker i would request dr nupam sir question yes sir you say awareness is not there and but the question on the subject what madam talked is very good but how to get the formulation we we'll, i think start this business i want to invest 1 crore rupees come on okay sir. yeah what to do who whom to contact where get the formulation what is the guideline for yes this? absolutely that's a yes, yes that's a great question i think and we will we'll, we would love to start our interactive session with that only sir ha but you have to put great. some question yes. if you have any million dollar question please contact this person with photograph and his mobile number is so and so right. so all the entrepreneur here will go and chase him but it's not great. like this you give the one hour lecture yes, and there is nothing we'll and okay. just only clapping yes, no. we'll be sharing the uh, presentation also ma'am no, in the no. last slide last slide last slide can you play the last slide slide of the pvt yeah the, that is the uh, that's why yes thank you for raising this question at everyone and we my uh, my presentation started with the same question because this is the new regulation and the new sector which is em emerging and we really need to have the contact so what simple thing with what you have to do and all the industry has to do is to some engage some ayurveda person that is number one and i have given the official address of this institution please scan this you can come to us we have the entire department dr garima please stand dr shifa you are there so we are we, we have the entire department hundred of faculties scholars and the department food startups and we have the anupam shrivastav who is sitting on the auditorium from nia jaipur so we have 800 institutions under ministry of ayush and this ayurveda doctor have this know how as a swastha vrutta department and there are authoritative text 69 textbooks so these are the classical recipes so whatever is your question we are really happy please give big hand raise big will please loud applause that swami ji is ready to invest 1 crore rupees please give your contact to us we'll reach to you yes, yes and then we will definitely like to have we really want investors 
and we have the knowledge we have we want technologies in research so what is the ready made available in the classical test with know how with niptum we will give you the ready made evaluated recipe to bring in the market yes We have dedicated interactive session for you, sir. We have planned it. So one moment only, sir. No, it goes no far. We are here, and old people are interesting more. Yeah, goes to the business, and we are here to sponsor the business, and we are here to invent the money. Absolutely, uh, sir. That's the way. Why you are going so far? We are not hurry. Give us lunch. We will be here up to evening. So all right. <laughs> we would we would love to have your company all day all day, sir. But. This is this is the way the session is planned. We have another session going on from some other industry in this session, sir. Yes, please. On the table, there is no medal question mark or or address or some circular. If you are interested to go in formulator or anything, please contact this number. This is the question we would like to know before we answer you. We will definitely request our uh, um, organizing partners to provide that, sir. On the yeah. table, and as just ma mentioned, this is the email ID. Uh, I think that also be shared with you in the presentation, um, because we have planned the session in a way. Because there are many other industry partners with MOFPI who are organizing sessions in this hall, so we'll try to cover it, but cover it up. And I think we have many other platforms also, sir. As ma'am suggested, we'll definitely be uh, getting in touch with you. Uh, we are looking for your one crore rupee investment. Yes. So we'll definitely get back to you, sir. It is and not a joke, no, it's not, sir. Yes. It's not, sir. We. This is why this session is planned, and we were expecting you and other bodies also to come up with such ideas and with such faith in a, in in the system and the idea. So we are really thankful to you to be the first one in that category. We'll have many more, I think, at yes. the end of the session. We all, are very. All. Yes, absolutely, yeah. sir. Thank you. Uh, now, thank you. Thank you. I would request uh, our next speaker. Uh, Anupam sir from National Institute of Ayurveda to talk about Ayusha Heart, please sir. <laughs> Very good morning, dignities on the dais and out the dais. I appreciate your concern sir. Definitely we have a lot to offer you. Let me commit from Madam side. We have a lot to offer you. And we are not just sleeping. Even FSSI, even Ministry of Ayush, we are ready with the set of the recipes. We are ready with the set of the questions and answers to answer, to quench what you desire you have. Definitely, so each session has some its own timings and schedules. During the lunch, of the lunch, we are ready to answer. So I had been called in between as a second speaker. My what happens in even game, even life, when your first batsman bats well, Kohli jab achhi batting kar deta hai, to uske baad bahut cheejeen bach jati hai, kuch karne ko bach nahi jata. To we had been working together under the guidance of Tanujaya Nisri, ma'am. To many of the presentation will coincide with. To kindly pardon me for those things. I had been asked to share you unlocking the benefits of Ayush Ahar. To I have two basically, two reservation. To reservation, it is a title, though it has been proposed by ourselves itself. But this is nothing unlocking. First, this all, this all information which we are sharing you, it all is available on a public domain, number one. Ayurveda has been coming from generations to generations and this is not concealed. It is our inefficiency to decode those knowledge in terms of Sanskrit or English or Hindi, whatsoever it is. And number two, this is, we very frequently use Ayush Ahar, yes. There are different streams of Ayusha are there, which includes yoga also, which includes Yunani also. We have to understand the yoga usually talks about the, the, the natural things. So it is, it is a kind, may not be misnomer, but it is not a well-defined, it is not Ayush Ahar. It does not carry any legal sanctity. Basically, the legal sanctity talks about the Ayurveda Ahar. So we should do something unlocking the benefits of Ayurveda Ahar. I will be uh, discussing you, sharing you what I have learned between my the journey with Arveda Har, and if you say Alok, you have to help me. Yeah, we all understand what is the nutrition. I don't go in the details because this is all theoretical matter. Importance of the nutrition is all known to us, health, development.
Better nutrition, what does everybody knows? Immunity, stronger health, longevity. Yes, we are, we are on a double burden of malnutrition. Everybody knows it is undernutrition and also the overweight problem. This is a global problem. And if you see further, the global burdens, these are the all nothing. Just to catch the, the, the momentum of this, our presentation, we all understand this all is on public domain. Hunger, every, every 11th person in the world is suffering from the hunger. Stunted, you see the stunted, wasted, and the malnutrition. Children are more prone to them. You see, 150, one, around 150 million children under the age of five are stunted. It is a dramatic information, and it is a worse condition. Similarly, with the West, it is a global platform. The Westing is very common. 50, around 50 million people are suffering from the Westing. Overweight, anemia, every 30% 30, 30 of female of the reproductive age is suffering from the anemia. And even 40% of those children are suffering from the anemia. So this is, a, this is a global burden. And this burden needs to be addressed through different, not only is the medicine, other component also, where food or something, ahar, what you call. And similarly, you see the malnutrition, we all understand well what is the malnutrition. It's a two component, undernourishment and also overnutrition. These, these, are the, these are the real facts. WHO, we all understand the WHO did need, doesn't require any of this. It has been come up for this to address these problems, promote the balanced diet, sustainable food practices, and achieve the food security. Food security is more important in a country like us, developing countries or underdeveloping countries, and there are strategies are there. We all understand WHO, different strategy, national food control system, responding to food safety, addition in a stakeholders engagement. That's why we are here all, on a, working on a similar line on trying to pitch in on those lines and also the promoting the food safety, most of the food trades. So these initiatives have been taken and yes, the, the, how do I come on, the, what WHO says about the plant product? Minimally processed plant foods have the low risk of the NCDs. It, it definitely gives a lead to us, it gives, gives a, a, a work in your woman to us to work upon and our, we all understand the ultra processed plant food are the more negate the health benefits. So yes, some point of time we have to go back to our basics and it encourages the mindful use of the nutritional contents of the plant-based products. So thereby, somewhere, somewhere we see how the things are moving towards our own and action, decade of the action of the nutrition, UN declaration, we all are aware, there's nothing to explain all about. Yes, if you see the plant, nutraceutical, there's a lot of terms are floating in the market, it's not the right place to answer all those, what is a nutraceutical, what is a junk food, there is a lot of time it's required, but we see, if you turn the pages of our own systems, particularly Ayurveda, we see, we, we have seen the dietary fibers, a lot of things are being given, trifla, banana, anamalki, this all comes under those, and that's, that's the benefits, what Ayurveda properties are there, and the what benefit is being offered. You see the other chart, there's a lowering cholesterol, CVD, this thing, rolling this. Similarly, the probiotics. We have everybody knows about probiotics and prebiotics. The probiotics, we see the takra, the very good answer, buttermilk, what you call. And it is a good answer. It is, it is a good answer for allergy, asthma, UTI. A battery of the condition, it has been indicated in our own classics, whereupon the leads could come from there. Similarly, the set of uh, prebiotics also, where the inulin from the garlic and other, other lacto, uh, this banana and tomatoes and lycopenes, these, these, these have a, a lot of good things whereupon this could be dwelled upon. And fufa, a lot of, we all of fufa is being, called flax seed has gained enormous of the markets. So these are the few leads already available with us. And this, I finally go to what, what Arveda thinks. If you see the contemporary science, we talk where it only talks about the minerals, it talks about the protein, it talks about the carbohydrate, in addition, in addition to our conventional understanding of the food, what the Arveda talks about. Yes, we talk food as a Mahabhashya. This is a Sanskrit term. It is a, it is a big medicine, you may call it. Not only it takes, maintains the health, but also somehow useful in the treatment methodology. And it's also, uh, what is the beauty, what Madam was talking about, it, the beauty is that how to eat, what to eat. There are so many descriptions are there. Many descriptions are there. Not, not only it maintains the health, sustains, but your, it, it promotes uh, uh, longevity, immunity, strength. A lot, a lot of features have been said in our classics. And uh, it is also said as a pillar of this. This is the dietary guidelines. What are Madam quickly moving? These are the eight guide, uh, factors of the dietetics. This is the very beauty of Ayurveda. The people who are not from the Ayurveda, the people who belong to the system, they are well aware all but that uh, what to eat, what, dietic, what is the dietic incompatibility, what Madam was talking about. There are certain foods. 
In current hurry, worry, curry era, we are not aware what should be eaten, what should be not mean. We go to the parties, we in a buffet system, buffalo system, what I call, we mix all the systems. Somewhere food is uh, moving towards the sweet and sweet is too sour. This is all rubbishes. This all makes of, it's a, a rubbish diet. So there are, there, there are our authors, thousand years back, they have written about what should be eaten, what should not be eaten. If, you, if we go this, this slide, they, there is a potency incompatibility. Fish and milk, what Madam was talking about. We know honey and cow ghee should not be mixed. Many as many are the other dietic interpolities, a huge chart is there. I have called out few of them. There are, there are certain things, some view, we should not do. What Madam was talking about, banana, banana milkshake. It is a frequent to all. Do we understand what is the, what is the rationality behind what the Ayurveda talks about? So these things should be taken a lot of consideration. See, the personalized diet approach. If you see what, what my temperament, my body would be different. Everybody knows on a current scenario of Prakriti and temperament. Accordingly, the different, different types of the pulses. We are Mukta, it is a marsh. In an Indian people in an Indian scenario, they all understand. And this should have a different, different effect on the body or the different personalities of the body where the, it could be well assessed by the phenotype other than the genotype. Simply, if you talk to assess the Prakriti, you simply add a certain set of the questions, certain set of the software. So similarly, you can plan your what pulses, what diet could be better for you. This all talks about. Similarly, the fruits could be better. This is a huge list you can take if required, if you're interested for those. This is what to time what she was talking about. I will not go in those slides. Yes, Poshan Abhiyan, everybody knows. It is not a new thing to the ministry, uh, the government of India, Honorable Prime Minister took, which is a flagship program where different departments come together. Just the, the National Nutrition Mission for launch. And this a lot of advisory, a lot of solutions has been, even the Ayush based solution were incorporated in those portion of Yan. Yes, Ministry of Ayush has also taken a dietary advocacy for Kuposhan Mukt Bharat. This, our own ministry has taken certain initiative. Details are available, you can Google and you can find it. These are the few relevant research related to diet. You can see there are there, there's a lot of side. It is a huge, if you go research, get and just made a Arveda Ahar and some other research platform, you can see the, how the research, relevant research has come forward, which has been proven the relevance at all. This, I will quickly come to the, uh, this Arveda Ahar topic. These are the all literary to us, what we have done. This could be of your interest. The food is regulated by so many regulations. Rules are there, acts are there, orders are there. This all somewhere, somewhere directly or indirectly related to the food. In there, the new category of the Arveda Ahar, what we are talking about, we want to see what Arveda Ahar, it, because before this, a, a, the market is what I was talking, flooded with the nutraceutical, functional food, dietary food, even the herbal products. If Indian context, you talk the herbals are the orphan. If you see the herbals, the regulatory provisions are, as a food FSSI is regulated. But if you talk the herbal medicine, it's very misnomer is being used. So plant-based products are usually taken as a herbal products. And the, again, the market-driven approach, the COVID, it was a, a, one of the disaster, biggest disaster of the world. When a, a, one side it had another put a lot of loss to the country, across the country, globe. At the same time, it was a silver lining where in the demand of such product, the food-based product, the product which are supposed to enhance your immunity, the people have come up to, for those products. So this was a kind of a uh, silver lining between cloud, what we call. So this I've given the, you, you, the most of the audience are in the, uh, Indian. You see the shops of the Ayurveda shops were queued upon. Probably in 55 years of my journey, I haven't seen that type of acceptance, that type of the curiosity of these products. So this all cost, this all cost. And also to spread the goodness of the Ayurveda to the masses, which is not available, maybe there's so many reasons. So we tried to bring the government of India through Ministry of Ayush, Bright brought a new regulation that is called Ayurveda Ahar. Very quickly, I will go, what could be Ayurveda Ahar? Or where any, any recipe or any formulation or any ingredient which, which has been mentioned in certain books. Simply understand, in certain, it is a definition, certain books are there, list of the books are there, that is a more than 68 books are there. And this is a dynamic document. I have two minutes more. Is it? Time is over. That's why I was very quickly. There are certain, certain reference books are there. Very quickly I will go. Certain books talks about what could be there. Barring, barring those books also contains the drugs. The, those books also contains the other things also. Psychotropic substances also. These are books that these, if barring those, any formulation, any recipe which comes in the market will be termed as a Ayurveda Ahar. 
and differently. There are the different categories of the ahar, what the madam was guiding me. There are the different categories, what a uh, gentleman was asking and curious about. There are different categories are there. I'm, on this platform, I am on behalf of madam, I'd like to share. Quickly, the FSSI will be sharing you with the guiding document. Certain has been done at IA also. We will be sharing more than seven, 700 formulations. Until it has come in the public domain, it, is a, it may be taken non-officially. More than 700 formulations are there and 71 categories are there. I will show you very quickly. And there are different categories. Say, if you are copying any formulation which is written, it will come in the category A. Certain drugs, certain plant drugs which are not covered in those books, if you are incorporating, it will go B. Certain indication, more modified food format, it is there. So different categories are there. So of Ayurveda, food regulations has a different category. You copy the food formulation, make a food and market it. And there could be, you take some other ingredients which are, which are in the market, like stevia. Stevia is not regulated by Ayurveda. But if you take a, make a food, and if, if you prove it on the basis of the concepts of the Ayurveda, yes, it could be taken as a food. So this, this opportunity, this innovation has been given to this category, where the in contrary, the drugs do not allow us. So these are the categories, B, B1, B2, B3, with different, different, and fortification also. We see iodine, wala, namak, we see some, some, some uh, flour, wheat flour, blended with some, uh, some uh, ashwagandha, something like that. So definitely the blended or the adding botanicals could be also given a chance to work. And this, this very quick say, this added vitamins, this, these are some few lines, some few lines. Yes, FBO, food business operator, alter the recipe. You can even alter recipe, but yes, minerals, vitamins could not be added. So the sanctity of the Ayurveda remains the same. When you are adding the minerals from outside, and the natural vitamins, minerals can be declared. If, if the natural vitamins are there, plant based own source, it could be, a, it could be addressed. Safety requirements, there are different schedules are there. Schedules talks about the details of the rules. Should you see only the preservative? Yes, additives, preservatives what could be used. Definitely those are, the, those are the natural additives and preservative that could be used. This is what Madam has talked about. Yes, we need to display of these are logos which we are talking. She was detailed all those. Definitely it should only for the oral use, not for the nasogastric con consumption. And the below the 24 months of the youth is not allowed because a lot of for the neonatals and the infants, a lot of works needs to be done and being done. So once it is below 24, year, 24 months, it is not allowed. It should be, it should be not for the, any other than other, other route is allowed. And the warning should be, it should be kept storage. These are the regulatory provisions. So I will not go in detail because he allow, doesn't allow me. So there's a regulatory provision. Simply, if you, if you copy any formulation which is already described, you have to inform the FSSI. You have simply informed the FSSI. Presently, the licensing is being done at the FSSI headquarters, not with the state contrary to drug, because we, we need a handholding to the states also. So due course of time, your state government could issue the licenses, but currently it lies with the FSSI and with the help of the Ministry of IOSH. Regulatory provision, definitely it is coming in the uh, FSSI regulation. Definitely the licensing authority goes to FSSI, but the advice of the battery of the experts, which are going to advise which formulation needs to be uh, under which category of our schedule provisions. Similarly, the schedule, this is the list of additive. You see, mangum, acacia, this spice, honey, jaggery. These are all the plant-based products. So this, this, this attempt has been, uh, approach has been made so that the, it, the sanctity and the, the beauty of the Ayurveda remains with all. These are the, she already has discussed all about it. These, these, are, these are the recipe. This is a category one recipe which I was talking about. You see, these are the already recipe existing in the Classics, we will be sharing you very quickly. These are the certain, if you see the, if you see the presentation, maximum is a soup. More than 100 formulations have been isolated as a type one, type, type A, this is a fruits and the gruels, rice gruels are there. So majority of this in addition to Krishna, Aole, so this, this has been done. And this is steps toward, lastly, but not the least, towards achieving SDG two. You all be knowing SDG two, zero hunger, what talks about. Yes, one thing, let us hope for the good. And we, we all understand one who has health has a hope and one who has a hope, he has everything. So definitely we should have hope for the betterment of the sector, betterment of society, through the, our old traditional approach, blended what she talked about, the blended with the modernity and the technology. You cannot live in a village, you cannot away from the technology. So attempt has been made with the support of the FSSI, how this could be not only limited to Indian population, but the global platform and the global market bringing the economy, pushing our economy, what we call in third economy, five position. Yes, definitely we aim to push our product for those things. Yes, our prime minister says from plant to plate and from matter to physical strength, mental well-being, 
the impact and influence of uh, traditional medicine and the traditional foods are immense. With this, I stop my deliberation. Thank you for your patience hearing. We will take, sir. We will take what Madam has committed. Only one question, whatever you talk. If we believe that there are many traditional issues, I think that the Indian people are very much I, I throw the ball in a call court of the organizer, and definitely we are conducting sensitization. To definitely, I appreciate your concern. We are we are conducting just to brief me. Just I brief you. We are conducting the sensitization program. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. We get it, yes, sir. We get it. We get it, sir. And uh, I think already time to time we are doing that. But maybe there are some email IDs we haven't reached. So we uh, assure you we'll definitely take all email IDs, all contacts. We proactively approach all industry stakeholders. I think many of us are already known. So yes, sure. Thank you, sir. Uh, now, moving on, uh, we had another uh, uh, great talk by Anupam Srivastava, sir. He uh, touched upon uh, mainly regulatory uh, framework he talked about, and it is very essential for us, for critical also, that we all, uh, many of our stakeholders from the industry, they sometimes may, uh, you know, uh, don't get information about it. So he has touched upon it, and also shared resources online, also you can get information about it, and then e on email IDs we also be providing. Then he also talked about great concept, food, if we consider food as medicine, if we take you know, uh, that kind of consideration or that kind of uh, scrutiny into our food, if we make uh, careful food choices, then we can have, as the global efforts are doing, we can have a better human life. So uh, thank you for that great idea, sir. He also talked about, again, um, uh, FSSAI, it has recognized Ayush Ahar, uh, Ayurveda Ahar concept. So that is, again, a regulatory framework. Also, post-COVID, he also touched upon the scenario. So that is, again, uh, a new perspective, sir. Thank you for sharing that. And then uh, he also talked about diversity, 700 food recipes he has talked about. So I think the industry will look it up as 700 opportunities, sir. Thank you for sharing that also. Now, this is the time to uh, you know listen to the other side of, of, of uh, uh, this discussion, which is from the industry side. We have... Uh, Mr. Viral Tiwari, co-founder of Nuska Kitchen, who will talk about accelerating uh, growth in Ayush startup. Please, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's truly an honor to be here today at such a prestigious event, surrounded by individuals who are passionate and passionate about innovation and growth as I am. Uh, my name is Viral Tiwari and I'm the co-founder of Nuska. And today I'm here to share about my journey, one that began with skepticism and evolved into the belief and which is now focused on redefining maternal health sector. Nuska wasn't just a uh, business idea, it was a personal mission for my mother. With a background deeply rooted in uh, traditional Ayurveda, she grew up observing and learning from her grandfather. Uh, who was a Vaidya. And despite not having a formal degree in this field, her knowledge of herbs and spices and the healing properties was immense. Her passion for Ayurveda coupled with her desire to support women's health is why I am here today. It all started with a simple yet powerful realization. Modern women, especially those living in urban setting, are losing touch with the traditional foods. In the fast-paced lifestyle, left, ro uh, uh, left little to no room uh, for time-consuming rituals and homemade remedies. And my mother noticed this gap and took it upon herself to create products that would bring uh, benefits of Ayurveda uh, to the convenient form in the modern world. Uh, but I must admit, uh, my immediate uh, reaction was skepticism to this. I was not immediately convinced about the potential of my mother's idea. Like many, I also thought that why would anyone buy something which could be made at home? And wh what's uh, the reach of it? What's the efficacy of it? 
but then I got involved in the operation, something remarkable happened. We started receiving letters, messages, calls from women who had used our products. Their stories were so powerful and emotional on how our products were helping them recover postpartum that made me uh, an advocate of this situation. These personal stories were transform uh, transforming for my perspective. And today we offer 72 Ayurvedic products, uh, which are primarily Ay Ayurvedic ahars, each designed to address specific aspects of women's health and from preconception to postpartum. Uh, now, obviously, uh, being a startup, our journey was fought with challenges and uh, each obstacle taught us a valuable lesson. I would like to share a few with you uh, be because we have discussed what uh, the government proposes. I am on the other side of it. We have started a business uh, in the similar category. Possibly, uh, we have been doing it for the last four and a half years, so I can give a slight two cents of my advice on uh, what the challenges were faced. So firstly, the challenge was lack of awareness. Ayurveda, while still gaining popularity, is still surrounded by a little misconceptions. Many see it as a slow or ineffective uh, compared to the modern medicine. So the convincing the people that these products rooted in century-old wisdom, backed by modern sciences, could provide real benefits was not an easy task. So what we started to do was identifying the gap that we had no authority to speak about these things. Uh, we being a very nascent stage startup, we had to uh, rely on other people's credibility. So we started conducting workshops with healthcare professionals. Uh, since we were dedicatedly based on uh, pregnancy and postpartum nutrition, uh, our agenda was to uh, connect with gynecologists per se and healthcare specialists, nutritionists, yoga experts who could uh, propagate our products or uh, speak about it. And then even if we had this done, there was another issue which was overcoming the do-it-yourself perception. The notion that our product could be made at home was another hurdle. Many women, especially in older generations, believed that they could replicate the formula in the kitchen. Uh, what they did not realize was the complexity of precision involved in creating these products. Each ingredient we use is carefully selected, processed to preserve its medicinal properties. For example, if you have a lactation powder that we provide, uh, it requires certain uh, careful meticulous preparations like sun drying it to the right uh, dehydration and then using uh, particular grounding techniques to uh, keep intact its efficacy. So eventually they saw the value in it uh, once we started putting across our word and that's how we got the acceptance in the market. And then once we were through with it, we had the product, we had the awareness ball rolling. The next uh, issue that we faced was with scaling and limited resources. We started in a small kitchen in Jaipur. We were hand rolling laddus with our own hand and packaging themselves. Uh, by demand grew, uh, we faced a dilemma how to scale. And we did not want to compromise on quality. So we couldn't afford a large scale manufacturing setup. So we thought our innovation should lie with uh, uh, packaging innovations. So that allowed us to extend the shelf life while maintaining the efficacy and the taste for the products. Because ultimately, when you talk about food, everything uh, comes secondary. The taste is the primary thing that attracts the customer for a longer duration of time. So now we created a, a team of uh, our uh, local women who, who we trained into certain SOPs uh, that led us to the point that without any preservatives, we could keep our product with the same efficiency. So anyone who's having it in Jaipur, where we are based out of, or anyone who's eating it in New York, get the same result and same taste available. So today we have served over 50,000 women uh, in 20 countries with physical presence in five locations and in robust online platform. And scaling an IU startup is usually challenging due to the sector's traditional roots and uh, evolving regulations. Our journey offers a blueprint for others in the space. We began by focusing on small manageable batches, which allowed us to test our products and gather customer feedback with a huge investment. Without a huge investment, I'm sorry. This agile approach enabled us to refine our offerings and build a loyal customer base before seeking a large scale production unit. Our key strategy is to leverage the digital space effectively. So uh, our, still to the date, our marketing strategy is not uh, based on the idea that uh, 
we should tell people that they should buy our products. It is majorly based on the fact that we should make people aware that such products are available and what are their benefits. In turn, the sale would come. Uh, that is our uh, idea of it. Now, any business uh, for a rapid growth requires fundraising as an issue. I'm sorry, sir, I could not find you when the time was right, <laughs> when I needed it. So I, I uh, was connected with uh, around 70 different uh, investors in different positions pitching to them. But uh, the main idea uh, uh, that they had, or uh, the main problem that I faced during uh, raising capital was uh, raising capital in the IU sector presents uh, its own challenges. Uh, we were repeatedly told that our products were not validated enough and that our market was too niche. This feedback, although was disheartening, but uh, instead of getting discouraged, we thought that what it is, uh, is a situation wherein we do not have control of. Uh, so we thought, we, why, why not we should go for uh, something which is in our control. So we started uh, deliberately working or excelling in our own products. And uh, then the turning point came. So our customers became uh, pouring in and uh, the testimonials became the investors. In fact, the very first investor we had was a renowned gynecologist and clinical director from Hyderabad who started propagating our products as a feeble attempt to help someone uh, growing a small business to the point when she received a lot of feedback and she decided to get uh, on board with us as an investor. Similarly, we have the other two investors who were a customer initially and then became a spokesperson and eventually graduated to become an investor with us. And now uh, is the time when we have actually raised a round with an institutional investor as well. Entering the Ayush market, particularly with food products, requires careful planning and strategy. Firstly, it is important to identify the right market segment you are for your product. We were told, uh, and even today, I have been told by many uh, people uh, I meet on, on a daily basis that uh, we should uh, expand to general health or many products. Uh, but we think uh, for the time being, while we are functioning on that, our uh, focus primarily should rely upon pregnancy and postpartum nutrition because it itself is a very big market. And since we have developed our niche in that segment, we should capture that uh, first. Once the product is ready, I uh, believe the focus should be shifted to make it market fifth. The me that means testing different marketing channels and strategies to see what world uh, what works best. We started uh, as an offline local store, a local household kitchen, eventually growing uh, into leveraging social media to build community around our brand. And uh, definitely then moving forward, we currently are present on multiple marketplaces and uh, our own website and some physical stores as well. Now, monetization is, again, an in important issue when we come to this. Again, uh, we cannot do it for charity for uh, as long as we want. A sustainable monetization strategy is also required. So decide on your sales channel, uh, whether it is an online marketplace, a physical store, direct to consumer through our uh, own website, or each channel has its pros and cons, but the choice should be aligned with your business model and target audience. For example, we found that e-commerce worked very well for urban settings, but eventually we had to go for a physical setup for a traditional audience which are not available or comfortable buying it online. Now, all of this happened because uh, my mother had this idea. Uh, so I would like to take a mo uh, moment to talk about her as well. It true vision uh, behind Nuska, she is the one. Uh, she was always uh, she always believed in the power of natural healing even before nuska she was known to uh, known in her community for her homemade remedies she would help new mothers friends and neighbors with her concoction we used to step in the house coming from the school and we would see that our home used to smell like herbs just because my mother was uh, trying to help someone who had recently come out of a pregnancy in the neighboring uh, house her contribution goes beyond just formulation. She has been an educator and a mentor and a relentless advocate of women's health. Today, her recipes are part of a brand that has not only gained the trust of uh, thousands of women, but we have been recognized by multiple platforms, like Shark Tank India, where we were able to showcase our vision and gain support from influential marketeers and investors. Uh, the maternal health market in India alone represents a significant opportunity with 25 million births annually. The demand for effective, safe, and natural product is immense. Less than 10% of women in urban areas receive adequate nutrition support during and after pregnancy. This gap 
presents a tremendous opportunity for Ayush based startups. Uh, we have already seen, we, I, I can vouch for it, I have seen a tremendous positive response. Our customer base, which started with Indian, uh, which started with Indian diaspora communities, is now expanding to include much more diverse groups. And we are specifically uh, thankful for uh, Ministry of Ayush, Department of Science and Technology, startup incubators like I Start India and Startup India, who have been instrumental in our journey in providing the role uh, as a mentor. Looking ahead, our vision is to establish Nuska as the global leader in maternal health. We want to become synonymous when people think about maternity or pregnancy, they should uh, immediately think about Nuska. And in conclusion, I would want to leave you with a thought that innovation does not always mean creating something new. Sometimes it is about rediscovering something old and making it relevant again. That's what we have tried to do with Nuska, bringing back forgotten wisdom of Ayurveda and making it accessible to the modern world. Thank you. Thank you, Viralji. As we anticipated, we had a great uh, story from the industry side also. So, uh, so the story was very inspirational. Mother started the business, and then son is taking it to, uh, you know, new heights. Um, we have with us our next speaker, Mr. Adish Ashish Dikshit from Dabur. So good morning everyone, uh, I'm Ashish, uh, I come from industry side, uh, I'm heading regulatory in Dabar India, uh, but for the moment I would request that let us park aside regulations, packaged food, what Ayush R regulation says, so let us simply understand what is Ayush R, what are the relevant right examples in right context, how we can take them globally. So if all of us, 100 people in the room are able to understand what is Ayush R, the purpose of presentation in this event is achieved. So let us understand Ayushar, how we can imbibe this in our daily lives. So objective of Ayurveda also says that we should keep the healthy people healthy only. Later, disease comes later, but we sh the purpose of Ayurveda will be achieved if we keep the healthy person as a healthy only. So that is also objective of Ayurveda. Ayurveda, all of us know, is, is from, uh, you know, all the Vedas, but there is a Vidhi, which says diet rules. If we take our diets properly, then that can increase our health and, of course, life spam. So let us understand what is Ayush nutrition. So before we discuss about Ayush nutrition, there are some basic principles which, around which Ayush nutrition revolves. So it is about basic five elements of the body, like earth, water, fire, and air, and ether. And uh, of course, Ayush Nutrition offers, you know, preventive care, promoting lo longevity, and of course, aim to heal, heal our lives. Ayush uh, Nutrition Principle also says about mindful eating. That they say that without distracting manners, if we eat, eat our food, then that little be good for us. People also say don't watch TV during um, d d uh, your food. So we should be have mindful eating in our daily lives. That also contribute to good result of that particular food. Also. Portion control is very relevant. If we take anything in excess, that is bad for us. So, uh, so I, these are the basic principles of Ayush nutrition, which says we should have portion control also. It, it's a holistic approach uh, in our daily lives. So, uh, it's, when it comes to Ayush nutrition, it addresses few aspects. It is basically related to doshas. We have vata, pata, uh, uh, pita, and kapha. Personalized diets on all these three, three relevant doshas can help us, you know, uh, getting tailored diet and we can we can improve on our health basis doshas so these are very well defined in uh, ayurveda books and all that also basis our prakriti and vikriti prakriti means what is our natural constitution what, what is our body and the, then what what vikriti what current imbalance has happened so ayurveda if it if we understand that ayush ahar and ayush nutrition become personalized and we can we can have solve sol for many things 
Ayush, R says, uh, Ayush Nutrition says we should have wholesome food, we should have organic food, fresh foods. We should, we should have foods as it is they are, they are found in the, you know, our daily lives. It says about pure and sattvic nutrition, which says we should have fruits, vegetables, legumes and nuts and all that. It, Ayush also says that we should enjoy all seasonal fruits. Seasonal fruits has a lot of significance. So uh, anything which is, uh, in, uh, which is seasonal, we should, we should take that and we should in, in, involve on in daily habits. Ayush nutrition also, say, also is all about our understanding digestive health. It says there is a, lo a lot of role about Agni. Agni is in how, how our digestive health is. If we can incorporate right kind of spices and herbs in our daily life like ginger, cumin, fennel, they can improve our digestive health also. So these are basic simple examples which, can, which, which, which we can imbibe in, in our daily lives. So and uh, Ayush, Ayush nutrition also uh, helps us in, in many ways. We spoke about food combination also, that we should be eating right food with the right, uh, right food, not wrong foods like uh, the example of, of milk and salty food were discussed in the morning. I, Ayush nutrition also says uh, that a lot of nutrition can, can come from herbs also, like we have ashwagandha, amalki, satavari, which can promote a lot of good health and overall health for, for all, all of us. And spices, if we take, uh, you know, cinnamon, cardamom, and, and also good, good spices, I mean, they, they, they contribute a lot to health. So these are very relevant daily examples which we can take as Ayush nutrition in our daily lives. So we discussed about herbal, herbal teas also with, with some, uh, you know, uh, Ayurvedic ingredients. You do not need any, any approval, any, any packaged food for that. You can incorporate in your daily life at your home also. Right. So we have uh, like nutrition-rich superfoods in Ayush are like uh, we have amla, which is which is for boosting immunity. Moringa, moringa is a great example of vitamin and mineral source. In Ayurveda, there are no principles of vitamin and mineral, but if we take moringa, they are they are naturally carrying uh, vitamin and mineral into that also. And we have, we have brahmi, which is adaptogen, and th there are so many relevant examples discussed in the morning also. I'll jump to that. We have ashwagandha for boosting immunity, turmeric for antioxidant purpose. Trifla for you know detoxifying our body and tulsi for immunity and respiratory health. So these are some some right examples for uh, for uh, you know Ayush R. If we come out about global perspective of Ayush R, this is how we can take Ayush to global heights. In our daily lives, like if we incorporate our traditional wisdom into into uh, you know modern science and we take across the globe, that will be right blend and that will reach masses across the globe. There is a traditional vision in India, uh, age-old century knowledge, so we should be taking it globally, and there is a need also. This is in align with global trend of, you know, for better out health outcomes and uh, preserving our cultural heritage also. As I said, it's a holistic approach uh, that, that can contribute to our health and wellness, so there is a greater need to take uh, Ayurveda to the global heights also. So I, if we take right I, Ayush nutrition, uh, that has, that has, you know, a lot of, lot of, you know, role in prevention and reducing global burden of chronic diseases. So, uh, as I said, if we maintain good part of, you know, uh, Ayurvedic nutrition balanced diet, then that can reduce the global burden of disease also. And of course, this is, this is about holistic wellness. This is about body, mind, spirit and right eating also. I, uh, this, uh, right Ayush nutrition can contribute to chronic disease management also and then th there can be alternate approach in management, managing life disease also. And of course that can reduce co health, overall health burden also to the, to the whole the world. Uh, the topic also says it's, it's about uh, uh, sustainable you know, uh, growth and if, we, if we, there is a boom for Ayurveda nutrition that will support organic growth, the pe people will be you know, uh, uh, booming on, on uh, cultivating so many herbs and that will benefit farmer and local communities also. So, th and this can happen all across the globe. And this brings uh, many I uh, economic opportunities also around the globe. Ayush, uh, as of India, we know Ayush R, but we can take it globally. Ayush R product can be taken globally and there is a greater demand of, you know, herbal and natural products across the globe. And also, uh, local communities can be also benefited from, you know, uh, where are there, there are medicinal herb uh, cultivated plants local community can grow them and th that can become economical contributing to them also. And uh, there is a wellness tourism also. Uh, a lot of people come to India for, for getting natural therapies, get, getting Ayush nutrition, and that, but that should be expanded to globe also. There are some challenges also in, into that. There are, there are some regulatory hurdles. I'll s s uh, spend one minute on this. 
our our regulatory wisdom is not uh, you know uh, our in house regulatory uh, you know uh, documentation is not taken across the globe in a in a very right manner P there there is a lot of uh, uh, data asked by uh, overseas ministries they, they ask a lot of lot of safety data so a lot of clinical scientific validation into that but as india what we believe anything in ayurveda is tr traditionally acceptable clinically acceptable but oh, when we go to overseas market there is a lot of validation asked by by various regulators so that becomes a hurdle for us there are cultural issues also. There, there, there are different dietary habits, different you know beliefs, and uh, you know different local taste also. These become hindrance to Ayush nutrition because Ayurveda products largely are very very traditional and not modernized. So so that they become challenges for uh, carrying Ayush nutrition across the globe. So what we can do? I mean, all of us can do a lot about Ayur Ayurvedic ahar. Government can do like there is a World Ayur Yoga Day. We can we can have World Ayurveda Day with the theme of Ayush nutrition also. This is uh, and government is already considering a lot many programs for this. We as industry can do a lot of research and innovation. Why this is important? Because as I said, Ayurveda formats are very traditional. If we do, do a lot of research to modernize our formats, they'll be better acceptable to, into the market. We can have a lot of engagement and awareness. Like there is a role of influencers also. A lot of influencers say, say so many bad things about uh, this product, that product, but uh, right and you know. Awareness can be. Uh, we would request that uh, uh, these these influencers should speak about good of uh, good things about Ayurveda also. That it'll re it'll reach masses. There can be blogs also and digital platforms. And this Ayurvedic curriculum is not there across the globe. So that if we incorporate in our uh, uh, educational roots also, then it'll be good for uh, you know whole the community. And we should be integrating this 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 uh, age old uh, wisdom into modern healthcare system also. So. Uh, I will conclude with a, with a saying that, uh, like, uh, if we incorporate our uh, traditional wisdom into modern health, uh, health, you know, uh, habits, then that can provide us relevant solutions for the uh, nutrition and wellness. So and that's the way I use Har can go, go to the global markets. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the discussion, sir. Uh, we have our next speaker from uh, Dr. Manish Pandey from QCI. So let us have some views on regulatory framework again. Thank you, sir. Uh, <coughs> good morning, all. <coughs> so uh, I would be talking about compliance. Now, compliance is something which is sector agnostic. So you would not hear much of Ayush Ahar that I would speak, but I would speak to you about certain things that the Quality Council does in a manner where the acceptance of your produce or product or your commodities when packaged, processed, uh, moves across uh, countries to find acceptance. So uh, there are certain concepts which I would speak about. And uh, for anything which is specific to Ayush Ahar, we have all the experts sitting uh, in the dais. Now, uh, when we talk about compliance and quality, this is important. Compliance and quality across the products, across the organizations has these uh, elements. And these are the elements which the Quality Council takes care. For example, if I talk about something to do with the product certification, which of course Ayush Ahar would be, then there would be an ISO 17065 for which uh, you know the product should be compliant. There would be things like testing and inspections happening because when you talk about quality, people want to actually assess what is the level of quality and quality usually comes from a term that I use is conformance. So conformance usually in our system is through three uh, setups. One is certification, the other is inspection and the third is testing. So for that, if you understand a certification, let us talk about organic. Organic is a certification which is uh, focused on the quality management system. You put no chemicals, you get a product which is desired and has no chemical and therefore defined as organic. Uh, talk about grapes, grapes moves from one place to another. Then you talk about what is the grape size, what is its bricks value, what is its color and so forth. In that, you, it comes, uh, the term comes inspection because actually the punnet which is a 500 gram box which moves from X to Y location. Uh, you, uh, you know, inspect it for its property which the consumer demands. The third is testing. I'm sure everybody understands testing. From MRLs to, uh, you know, no uh, contaminants is something which testing does. So when you talk about being international, when you talk about Ayush, Ayurveda or anything which is more India specific to go to places, I think so this is the chart which you need as entrepreneurs <coughs> or as regulators to focus on where you talk that, okay, there are products, there are markets, and there are certain things that we need to do as a country 
uh, to achieve uh, compliance and acceptability in the global markets. Uh, this is something which also you need to understand. Uh, I represent quality, so, uh, and uh, the aim that we talk about quality is these are the pillars that ensure quality in any economics. Uh, if I talk about India, we have the BIS, which is the national standards body, which sets up uh, standards. We have uh, the uh, metrology, because if you talk about any measurement that you do, you do it in SI units, and the SI units needs to be traceable. One meter here should be one meter France and one meter Australia. So that kind of uh, you know, proficiency testing and uh, 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 traceability in terms of SI unit is something which the National Physical Laboratory, based out of Delhi, uh, does for us. QCI, I represent QCI. We are part of the Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry set up by the government. Our focus is to give uh, approvals to the certification or the confirmatory assessment bodies to actually go certify, test, and inspect, and give their reports. Our beauty is, as the uh, National Accreditation Board, that once a certificate is issued by any of our these three uh, activities, that is accepted world over. So we have the term which is called as inspected once, accepted everywhere, certified once, accepted everywhere, and of course then tested once and accepted everywhere. So this is the value that we add in the, uh, in the trade, and that is why we are a part of the Ministry of Commerce and Industries. Uh, we have mutual agreements with about 100 plus countries, which means that the certificate which we would issue under any system would be automatically accepted and vice versa. The last is market surveillance. Now market surveillance is, a, is the final dipstick about how these four bodies are working. Uh, I'm sure uh, being in Delhi or coming from metropolitans, you would see that FSSAI, who actually also is regulating the Ayu Shahar, would do random testings, pick up samples from the market to see whether they are up to the mark, whether the standards are followed, whether the units are okay, whether the accreditation or the certification bodies are doing their work is something which is done through a market surveillance. So, this is again a different concept. This concept talks about you know, how a country has these various organizations that focuses on quality because ultimately as consumers, when we pay, we need quality. And these are the mechanisms which help you about this thing. Not going to talk much about quality council, as I've told, uh, through a cabinet decision, focuses on trade and sees that you know, anything which comes out and goes out has a quality through a process, either inspection, testing, or certification. Uh, this is something which also will be very, uh, this thing, I know we are under time pressure. We have these boards, you have heard NABL if you are into the testing business, and this is what we do, that once you test in any NABL lab and you get that logo of NABL which is here, it is accepted world over because we have a mutual recognition agreement with uh, about uh, over 100 countries. Okay, so, uh, okay, this is important, uh, not getting into details, but the last one is important. So. Uh, my division is a division which works on very Indian specific things. Internationally, if you talk about quality, it starts from ISO, uh, which is uh, all subjects rather than electronics. Uh, if there is anything which is electronics, it comes to the IEC. There is the IS standards, which either adopts or adapts all these ISO, IC standards. The one which we do under quality council is do something which is very specific. We uh, are the ones who did the uh, yoga certification of personal when the Prime Minister spoke about, and in the UN we had the International Day for Yoga. So we did the uh, international certification of uh, yoga professionals, and that is still on. We have done something on cybersecurity. We have done in Ayush Mark, I'll speak about it in a, a couple of slides away. So our task is to see that if there is nothing which is in the global perspective to do it in India and then promote it in the global uh, arena. So this is important. Uh, this is again about compliance. There are two types of compliance which happens. One is which the government drives. Food is one and therefore we have FSSA. We have spoken about it as also IU Shahar being under regulation uh, May 2022 20, uh, that they have come out. So they come with an act. They have a regulator in place. There are rules and regulation and then they uh, you know give licenses for production. And they give it for a period, but every year they do surveillances for, again, that's the last point where the consumer gets value for money. The voluntary mechanism is some that QCI does very well, which means that while the regulations are restricted to the country or the political boundaries of the country, we, uh, we uh, focus on quality competitiveness from a global trade. If India talks about anything, it stays in India in terms of enforcement. 
But when you talk about voluntary mechanism, if you talk about quality, where the buyer who is internationally sitting wants certain qualities to be done, the voluntary mechanisms are the one which drives the process. I'm not going into uh, details, but uh, importantly, there are these voluntary standards, and then there is a technical regulations. At this point in time, AHAR, Ayush AHAR comes under the FSSA technical regulations, and at some point of time, it could also be uh, taking help of some voluntary mechanisms to show compliance. Um, okay, uh, so as far as my uh, uh, you know, quality council is concerned, we have done a lot of such activities. We have done drones for the government. We have done cyber security. We have done the Ayush mark. We also have done the uh, medicinal plants. And of course, we also help the industry and international organization such as UN SARC and BIMSTEC. Uh, this is theoretical. I'm not going to get into this, but this is something which would be of interest to you. While we have a regulation in place, at some point in time, we can dovetail regulations and the voluntary mechanisms to give the necessary impetus to the product which is going out of the country, which is the Ayush Ahar, where you can have certain things about ISO 2000 and other such uh, you know, quality management systems, which would also talk about you being not only compliant through regulation, but also meeting the requirements of the global markets. Uh, I, this is uh, something which people have spoken, but I'm not going to repeat, but if there is something which is of importance, I'll get into it. Now, this is uh, what we have done for the Ayush mark. Again, Ayurveda being something which is specific to India. We have a mark. We have 72 major players having that mark and about 6,000 odd products having the Ayush mark. Uh, this one is something which would need some kind of an international uh, you know, system in place. And through the process of accreditation, we might be able to push our things without you know, uh, people or the entrepreneurs going and marketing their quality. But if we have some system which is accreditation based, the certificate would itself be a passport for them to enter such markets. Um, okay, uh, again, uh, all theoretical. So this is, uh, this is what we people generally do. Uh, we talk about consistency, compliance, and consumer confidence. And this comes when you talk about the conformance through certification inspection and testing. Um, OK, I've spoken about both of them. And this is usually that we do, that in case if the Ayush Ahar comes uh, on a certification system, these would be the processes where you know, there could be the balance of requirement uh, through these standards. And once there is certified, then we could have the logo, which you have seen in the previous slides of Ayush Ahar. And that could be affixed and marketed globally. Uh, so. Uh, so I'm not going to get into details about other things, but this is what will happen. You will have a stamp of food safety and produce quality, which of course is a requirement in the global markets. It would give you better price realization. There would be measurable improvements that you could tell your buyer or international consumer. And of course, because we have seen that it comes from a lot of rural setups in terms of traditional food, so there would be a strengthening of livelihoods. Now, I think so with this, uh, I'm not going into other details. So this is the part which I was talking about accreditation, which means that if you have an accredited certificate, you are globally accepted, uh, or your products are globally accepted. Uh, with this, uh, this is the last slide. So we talk about uh, strengthening innovations with compliance frameworks. We are talking about harmonizing standards. We are talking about collaborations through accreditation. And of course, we are talking about strengthening the quality assurance ecosystem for global acceptance of Ayush food or Ayush Ahar products. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We so with that, I would like to start my presentation. I represent an industry which is pioneer in uh, integrating Ayush and modern food. Since we're all moving through times where everything is modernizing, so food itself has to modernize too. So the title of my presentation is Avestogen's Pioneering Innovations in Nutrition and Wellness, Crafting a Holistic and Sustainable Future. So we are basically into preventive health care, and the company I represent is Avesta Nordic, which takes you from wisdom of ancient India to the modern world. Avestogen's preventive health care philosophy is to develop products that, food, that feed into the global demand for safer natural health care alternatives, promoting products that incorporate proprietary, scientifically validated bioactives into everyday food. 
Our nutrition products are under two brands. One is the Vesta Nordic and the second is the Vesta Good Earth Foods. And the Vesta Nordic basically is a portfolio of independently branded, scientifically validated bioactives and dietary supplements. We are developing additional brands for our products targeting specific end markets. For Avesta Good Earth Foods, this is offering independently branded functional foods and health foods which are currently marketed in India. And our current market focus is with st uh, doing strategic alliance in place with global distribution networks. Holistic Health encompasses a broad range of well-being. Basically, it takes us to physical, mental, emotional, and social well-being. We are all aware of that. Avestogen's preventive healthcare, basically, we are one of the best in nutrition and innovation. So we have platforms like Metagrid, Botanical Bioactives, and Personalized Care, where we have isolated, tested, and commercially commercialized proprietary scientifically validated bioactive, uh, bioactives that can go into different formulations, including capsules, as ma'am also discussed about gummies. Yes, we have certain products which have bioactives with gummies, energy bars, and nutritional powders. For proprietary bioactive discovery platforms, we have Adept and Metagrid, which is a very comprehensive platform of natural bioactives which are linked to MOA using etiology specified, specific in in vitro assays, followed by extensive safety and efficacy monitoring leading to clinically validated branded bioactives. Now what we do here is we are trying to scientifically validate Ayush products you know, sometimes globally it becomes a problem to, act, to commercialize or market Ayush products because of lack of their scientific validity. But at Avestogen, what we are doing is we are trying to scientifically validate these bioactives which can easily go into food mattresses. Another uh, platform that we have is a Metagrid, which is a proprietary metabolite fingerprinting technology that provides a unique standardization method representing wide array of metabolites which synergistically contribute to the safety and efficacy of Phytoextracts. Scientifically validated uh, bioactives uh, that we have uh, today in market are leading to diabetes and calorie management. Then you have bone health, cardiovascular health, brain and mental health. So anything that has to do with uh, lifestyle, uh, you know, problems, Avestogen has certain solutions for, you know, all of them. So skin care, weight management is another category. We have antioxidant and immune health, respiratory and immune health again. Anti-inflammatory product like Xanomax, aging, Boswell, which has healthy anti-aging uh, bioactives. Digestive health, we have uh, Triflex. Women's health, we have Shatavari. Men's health, we have Tribulus. Another important uh, product that we have in this category is T-Star bioactives, which are, which are uh, bioactive gummies. So they are basically referring to sugar and weight management. They also help in lowering... Uh, you know, taking care of sugar spikes and diabetes care. So it's a very well accepted product. And it is a scientifically formulated product which, is, uh, which has bioactive gummies for all those who are striving for a healthier lifestyle and are facing diabetes. Ideal for people which, uh, who want to control their sugar intake for diabetics as well as Weight Watchers. Basically it promotes safe uh, satiety and keeps you full uh, longer because it's a gummy and helps manage HbA1c levels, 10 milligram per DL reduction in glucose. Blood glucose has been uh, seen in this. It has all natural ingredients. It is safe for regular consumption and has rigorous, undergone rigorous safety uh, standards as well. So the top three botanical products in Nutra uh, Ingredients Asia Awards, T-Star was one of them. We are very proud to share that. And bioactives and dietary supplements product portfolio, we have T-Star. We have Syncat, we have Bonafide, we have Phytoisia, we have Smartcall, Prova, then we have Think Well for Mental, Think well for mental Wellness, we have Mangosteen, we have Tribulus, we have Shatavari, we have Triflix for Digestive uh, System, and then we have Boswellia. Functional uh, food products with bioactives, these are some of the ones which are already available in the market. Now, innovations in nutrition and wellness, holistic and sustainable future is our goal as a company. And Basically, what we try to do is we integrate Ayush or Ayurveda with modern medicine because I think that's the need of the hour. We need such products to be glo to you know glow into the global markets because globally we need modernization of food, personalized healthcare. We are tailoring treatments based on individual constitutions and modern uh, data. We have evidence-based research where validating Ayurvedic practices through scientific studies is done. Then globalization, basically increasing global interest and adoption of Ayurvedic practices. Sustainability, using natural and eco-friendly resources. 
digital health, expanding access via telemedicine and digital platforms is what also we are looking at. Education, basically enhancing training and awareness about Ayurvedic practitioners and Ayurvedic uh, formulations, very important aspect. Regulation, basically developing frameworks for quality and safety, we are looking at that as well. Holistic focus, which is emphasizing preventive healthcare and overall wellness. And collaborative research, which is working with other health disciplines to innovate treatments. Because today it's the time where we need to integrate all medical practices to be able to give a good treatment to the people of the world today. So Avastajan is trying to do that. We are on our way and I hopefully we'll be there soon. We, uh, I would like to announce here, it's a very important platform and a very great news for all of us that we have just tied up with Apollo Ayurved for developing our co-brand, which is Avesta Ayurved, which is partnership between Avestagen and Apollo for the development of new range of scientifically validated medical food and dietary supplements. So it's a new step for us. It's a very new uh, collaboration that we have got into. So the uh, products that we are going to look at the products that we are going to look at is T-Star, which is for sugar and weight management, Bonafide for bone restoration. We have Smart Call, which is uh, for heart health. Then we have Hibix for women health, uh, health and skin care. Then we have Amla Pure for digestive health. We have Goji Max for stress and fatigue. We have Prova, which is for cardiac management, Avesta DHA, which is for brain health. Classic Muesli, healthy breakfast cereal, which is again going to be a part of the collaborative uh, product range. Thank you everyone, I was very quickly, I wanted to quickly wind it up because of the <laughs> request of the organizers and thank you for the patient hearing. And Ayushman Bhava, let's all be Ayushman all across the world globe. Thank you. Thank you for considering the request, ma'am. Uh, so obviously when you talk about nutrition, you feel more hungry. So we are moving towards lunch and uh, uh, I would request in this context, I would request all our uh, uh, audience members because we are starting QA session. So I would request you to keep your question brief so that our experts and uh, would also appreciate if you could, you know, point out which expert you want to want your question to be answered by. So uh, we would start your question and answer session. I would request uh, investing your team if you could uh, hand over microphone. So please hand over microphone to somebody who wants to ask a question. Would again request if you could be just brief and focused and you can you know, point out which expert you want your question to be answered by. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, this is Bhava Sindhu Sekia from Assam. Uh, actually, we are a startup from Assam, uh, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, really happy to uh, be here uh, uh, about the Ayush uh, Ministry this, uh, program. So I have some questions for quality control, uh, sir, Mr. Uh, Manish Pandey, sir. Uh, actually, uh, we have uh, done the R&D of our product. It's an elephant apple powder, beverage powder we are doing. It's a locally resourced uh, product, and we are uh, collaborating with some exporters for uh, exporting our product. But they are asking us uh, about the, this one, uh, certification and all uh, about the uh, Ministry of IUS or uh, just like Horlicks uh, right now, this one, diabetic, uh, uh, diabetic, uh, it's written in Horlicks. Same like that, uh, they are asking, can we write that, uh, then who, who will give us, uh, we are not getting any idea. We'll give that uh, one, that diabetic cure or something like that, because you have some very much nutritional products. Okay, see, when you talk about any claims to be done in the product, yes. it would be the line ministry which does it. So in this case, uh, if you're talking about something which is written, which is a label claim, actually, exactly, exactly. you will have to talk to FSSI. And I think so FSSI would have a SAM unit uh, or a FDA. Okay. Yeah, so go to FDA, Assam. Uh, might be in, uh, you know, uh, in the capital or uh, they would have yeah, regional yeah. offices. Okay. Or you can directly go to the internet. Uh, in the FSSI, there are uh, sections where you can pose a question, okay. leave your details and they will get back to you. So there, these are two things where you will have to approach them. And of course, when they do that, you would have to give them certain test reports okay. from an NAB accredited lab okay. stating that what you want to claim. And once your uh, you know, uh, your test report stocks and validates what you are claiming, then they would process your file. 
Mm. Okay, sir. And uh, what about uh, this one uh, for uh, I use? Uh, if you want to write uh, the pro in the product, it's uh, you have shown up uh, this one logo, na? So what will be the? Product? Yeah, so so it is very simple. See, I will tell you a logo is called as a, a certification mark. Exactly, sir. You only issue a certification mark when you comply certification or the technical criteria. Yes, sir. Very clearly, the regulation gives the requirements, okay. and there is an annexure here which talks about the product and how you have to handle it. Okay. So in that case, first you comply get an approval from FSSI, and in okay. that approval, you will also get a logo pack to uh, attest in your product. So this is the process. OK, from FSSI. Anything you want to add, sir? OK, thank you, sir. Thank you. And I think I will just add. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I will just add that uh, websites of QCI, BIS, FSSI, these are also repository of information on such topics. So you can also access that. So thank you, sir, for your answer. Next, any, any other question? Yeah, please. Hello. Yeah. My question is to any of the panelists. Uh, uh, I would like to know any startup schemes that are there from the Ministry of Ayush to produ uh, kind of push these products. Uh, any assistance from the Ministry of Food Processing specifically for these kind of products? Yes. Um, uh, Ministry of Ayush has a startup uh, uh, the scheme like All India Institute of Ayurved has been given this responsibility to be the incubation center. And we have the startup challenges. The one is Ayurved Ahar as a food startups. And the one who has been selected initial seed and entire handholding, like starting from the, uh, the recipe to processing to design. So entire, entire uh, in startup pipeline that we have that hand handholding uh, through CCAM also. And we initial 15 lakh rupees, the one who has been selected, it's been given. So you can connect us and I think. Thank you. And one thing which we'd like to just share the information uh, through so Invest we India we are doing. Questions. And we have Ayush, Ayurveda Ministry of Ayush has a stall uh, in the hall number 14. So I would urge everyone to please visit the stall so you'll get the detailed information there also hmm? in your feet. Thank you, ma'am. Ayush Ahar items are also displayed there, uh, you know, uh, developed yes, by IEA. Yes, and recipes Dari. are displayed so there. Great so you can, you can have, have a detailed look. interaction with our representative. So we are having last set of questions, if, if there is any question. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> and good afternoon. My name is uh, Dr. Vimal. Uh, my question, uh, I have two questions, actually. My first question is to Dr. Manish, uh, to quality control. Uh, sir, we are certified with Ayush Premium Mark. Earlier we were having with the, through TQI and uh, now we are taking it through IR class. So my question is that is this mark is uh, accepted by at Europe, uh, US or in European market? Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, the Ayush mark is uh, a certification scheme under the Ministry of Ayush. Uh, it is a voluntary scheme. Uh, being a voluntary scheme, I think so, uh, the 70 odd uh, companies that have the Ayush mark uh, actually market that on their own, talking about the quality parameters. Uh, as and when there are queries about its acceptance and the methodology, QCI answers them. Uh, so that acceptance is something which is buyer-based and not government-based. At this point in time, if you're asking me if there is a G2G or something of an acceptance, no, it is not. But from a compliance part, from a quality part, yes, there, that's an elaborate process. As you are a certified entity already, you have, you have been uh, walked through that. So uh, whenever there is a query, yes, as QCI, we uh, respond to it, and that is accepted. And that is why we have about 6,000 odd products which has that Ayush mark at this point in time. So can I ask a second question? Yeah, yeah. this would be the last question, yeah. I think, and the so other this, session organizers. This, uh, this is for Dr. Uh, Sonali. Um, I'm happy that Avastegan is uh, uh, dealing into that, uh, the I hope it is into the marker analysis also, the yes. biomarkers. Yes. Uh, since all the Ayurvedic uh, medicines or Ayurvedic products or food products, uh, they have the, uh, they have multi basically multi components. Yeah. So uh, in the industry, we sometimes find it very difficult to detect the uh, 
marker the bioactive yeah bioactive uh, bioactive because it is a poly component yes. it is not a paracetamol that it has only one component yes, yes. so how do you deal with that are so you it's, it's basically it? a combination the bioactive that we are talking about is not a single molecule it's basically a combination of extracts and extensive cell assays and clinical trials has been done to come up to that bioactive as a you know effective bioactive for any particular category no, so we, all you, those studies are in place uh, if you talk about the uh, say if you talk about any ayurvedic formulation it has yeah. some multi components say for example if we have a paste uh, okay. which has around 50 ingredients yeah. so are you going to check that 50 ingredients quantitatively or you are um, basically targeting the one main molecule my question is that because ayurvedic formulation all right so uh, you just saw in the presentation also that we have a platform called as metagrid so these uh, profiles have been uh, there we have a metabolite profiling of all of these so once we come up to some bioactive, uh, you know, exact formulation that we want to use in one of our products, that actually overlaps all those, uh, you know, metabolite profiling uh, in that. All the extracts are actually metabolically profiled in the metagrin and then we also do the efficacy for that, the combination that we have. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so uh, I would like to thank all our speakers. Uh, it was a great session, I guess. It, uh, for the startups specifically, it is very helpful, I guess. So we touched upon all the three uh, aspects. First, the opportunity, underlying opportunity for the industry. And then the challenges faced by we have industry uh, partners, in, uh, speakers from the industry who, you know, uh, who, who talked about the challenges that they faced initially and then how they overcame the challenges. Definitely a great help for the budding uh, industries. And then we had uh, uh, expert from QCI who also talked about how you know you can fit into the compliance mechanism so I think in the session was re session really met its objective and we really thank you for your patient hearing thank you so much can take from her.